Hello, cryptopreneurs. This is Meredith Lochran with Crypto Trader News, and today's Bull Sessions is a very special episode where I got to interview Evan Vandenberg, the Director of Business Development for WAX, the Worldwide Asset Exchange. Well, first of all, I wanted to just thank you for being here. I know that yeah. you're really busy and you've got a lot of stuff that's uh, that's coming up. Um, so before I deep dive into some of those questions, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a part of the WAX development team? Yeah, totally. So first off, thank you and, and the show for having me on. I'm happy to be here. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Evan. I uh, am the director of business development at WAX. I've been here for about a, year, a little over a year and a half now. Um, spent most of my life in software, uh, started Intel, started my own company building mobile apps, uh, worked a bit as a consultant in the development space and then product at my last job and then uh, you know started as a weekend hustle building uh, kind of like gap contracts on Ethereum when Ethereum was in its infancy and, and really got into kind of the smart contract concept and it really kind of opened my eyes to you know, the possibilities of blockchain outside of, you know, Bitcoin and, and that. So that's the really short version. Um, I started evaluating projects in the space, specifically founders and teams uh, was kind of the crucial thing for me was founders, teams and kind of product market fit in terms of is what they're doing actually required? You know, does it need a blockchain? Does it even benefit from having a blockchain? Because I think, you know, certainly in 2017, early 2018, there was a lot of, we'll call it, to me, inefficient solutions, right? Like they're trying to use blockchain because it's a buzzword and it didn't really make any sense. So um, the guys at Wax, I mean, the founding team is just incredibly talented. They've done a lot of you know interesting things, both in crypto, in, in a, you know, in-game item trading and venture capital as well. And so, you know, that was really the driving force there. Yeah, I mean, I noticed that uh, with the blockchain community, it's still a very small community, but they're kind of tight knit and they tend to, I guess, depending on the blockchain, they tend to follow each other from one thing to another and, you know, always trying to strive for a better blockchain or a better product that they can develop on. So that's really kind of cool um, to see that that whole migration of uh, of where we're going with with blockchain and everything. So yeah, that's really kind of cool. Now on the bottom on the ticker here, I have this uh, 30 day challenge, which I saw on Twitter. And this is actually how I got in touch with you. Thank you to Mark uh, Fidelman for getting me in touch with you. Uh, because I was just like, I have to hear more about this. And I think the thing that caught my eye mostly because I'm not a dev, but I saw $25,000 prize uh, pool and I was like, man, I wish I was a dev. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything you can tell us about that? Um, I know, um, I I have a couple of blockchain communities that I participate in, right? And so we have this EOS back token, and nobody's using it anymore because of the pain points that we're finding with the EOS blockchain. So I totally understand looking for an alternative to it. And I just noticed on Twitter that Wise Crypto Ratings downgraded EOS from a B to a C minus. So that doesn't really bode well. But I think that's great news for you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about the challenge and what you're doing and who's coming on board? Yeah, so we can we can kind of, you know, first and foremost, I mean, look, this, the struggles that are happening in EOS mainnet right, right now, like I, a lot of that stuff was was difficult to prevent. I mean, it was exacerbated by kind of the situation with the block producers and, you know, some vote buying and, and, and you know, potential manipulation there amongst uh, some of the top uh, VPs, um, not necessarily the VPs, but the vote, you know, token holders. I have no, you know, we have no ill will towards EOS. I mean, frankly, we're, you know, we're using a lot of their technology. I think EOSIO is incredibly uh, valuable technology and, and Depos was really the only solution that we saw in the marketplace uh, that could really handle our transaction needs um, and a lot of the technical um, requirements of, of you know even running you know our, our own businesses and, and certainly where we saw partners needing um, you know throughput ease ease of use all of that so I, I do want to start off by saying that and you know having this challenge is really us wanting to expose people who are inundated in the in the technology already right to this potential solution right 
So we've got a lot of EOSIO devs uh, around the world. It's incredibly, incredibly talented and smart community there. Um, you know, rivaled probably only by really like the Ethereum development community. And uh, there's a lot of really interesting projects going on in the space. And we wanted to show them that you know their skill set, their technology, all of this can be put to use on chain with a lot of different solutions um, that may be optimized for a lot of these use cases. And I think most of their use cases. And I think this challenge was, you know, uh, a way to incentivize people to explore, you know, to get some of these top talented, you know, top tier talented devs to take a look at, at, at Wax and some of the offerings we have with our service layer and our new governance, mo our governance model, uh, launching the work proposal system this week. And we really, you know, we really want to kind of highlight that their skill set is still transferable and there's all sorts of things they can do cross chain, whether it's duplicating their DAP or if it's fully migrating like somebody like Karma where it just became, you know, inefficient to run a business on EOS mainnet. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the impetus for this challenge. And so we're taking on uh, the top 10 dApps uh, that submit based on our review. Uh, we'll be given $2,500 each uh, to port, migrate, clone, uh, depending on, you know, what's in their proposal, uh, their dApp and, and bring it to the WAX ecosystem. So. Yeah, I, and I think it's really huge to be uh, to have that cross chain application because you know everybody they're they're kind of doing the development thing, and I know when you have traditional apps, you know when you're on your Android or your um, iOS, and they have exclusivity, which is kind of really a pain for a, a lot of developers, you know. So now they have to kind of have a, a choice between going with um, you know, old school or kind of running into this new blockchain arena. Uh, are you finding a lot of people who um, hesitate because of that? Sorry, I cut out a little bit there. Can you repeat the question just in, in a little bit of the context behind yeah, there? So so when uh, when it comes to uh, people who have their de uh, their apps and they want to migrate it onto blockchain, I know that there are a lot of pain yeah. points, especially with uh, with applications that are on Android or iPhone and migrating over to blockchain, especially if there's like exclusivity and things like that. So I know with blockchain, uh, an important thing is being able to work with cross chain applications. And how how will Wax help? Um, ease that transition and really onboard people who are creating apps for uh, for those things for the traditional um, you know like the traditional developers and and getting them to adopt blockchain um, is Wax kind of making that easier for them? Yeah, so I think there's you know there's a bit to unpack there, right? I mean, there's the question of kind of like the mobile, the iOS, the Android ecosystems, and, and some of the problems there, which we can touch on. But I, you know, for the sake of this conversation, I'll focus on kind of what we, you know, what is our ethos behind? How do we make this easier for people? How do we get this to mainstream devs? And and really, if you've taken a look at our uh, developer site, right? I think it's it's an incredibly incredibly good resource about Wax. It's um, developer.wax.io, and uh, we've spent a lot of time, resources, um, and effort, right, putting together this microservice layer, which. You know, kind of the, 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 at the forefront of that is the Wax Cloud Wallet, which we launched last week with prospectors. I mean, I think the results really do speak for themselves in terms of how, you know, efficient it is at onboarding customers compared to anything in the crypto space and, and really just generally. Um, what we did there is we microserviced a, what we call the Wax Cloud Wallet, which is really a very, you know, sophisticated system of using social logins, creating wallets on users' behalf, and actually doing private key management for you know the novice user or, or really anyone who doesn't want to have to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe it's just to play a game. Um, there's all sorts of use cases that really, really do not need something as sophisticated as a hardware wallet or having you know managing your own private keys and dealing with that whole kind of you know I'm used to it. You're probably used to it, but it's just not something that's 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 helping a mainstream adoption. So we removed that pain point and we've enabled that to you know be to be available to devs in, in just a few lines of code. Right? We microservices. We're using a JavaScript, you know, Wax.js library. We've got all sorts of different, um, you know, plugins and, and, and frameworks that you can just use directly in your application. So that really is kind of our, our strategy in terms of, you know, make this easy for a dev of any kind, right? To, you know, whether it's becoming cross-chain or really becoming interested in blockchain and having a, 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 uh, an easy entry point. Um, so that's kind of the thought there. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers the question. 
Yeah, I definitely. And, you know, speaking of the wallet, because I know you touched on that, um, I went and signed up for it and it was really easy. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is that so easy? Why am I able to sign in with my Facebook account? And where, you know, like, the, so I see that there aren't any uh, private keys that I have to worry about. But that that kind of raised a little red flag for me because, you know, I'm kind of, I'm still new with the blockchain. And so, you know, everything's about your private keys, make sure they're secure, don't share them with anybody. And here I am signing in with Facebook, which isn't all that secure. And I'm like, how, how does that work? You know, can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, we can, we, we can kind of touch on it. I think, you know, without getting into the technical nitty gritty for this particular mm -hmm. discussion, right? I think there's there's certainly valid points to bring up, right? Um, I, I'm not as concerned about the security myself. I know that there are, without doubt, right? If you're doing big dollar trading and you and you want to like this is your your nest egg, go get a go get a hardware yeah, wallet, right? That's the only <laughs> real answer there, right? Um, but this is so for this in is, for in game app purchases and things like that. Then that would be perfect. Yeah, and it's been incredibly secure so far. We have two-factor authentication. We've taken a lot of steps, and, and we can get into the technical hurdles of that you know we had to, to to kind of overcome to get here. But it is it is not as simple as as it sounds. And I think there's a lot that goes into it. It's also much more customer friendly, right? And so we're sitting here and we're looking at you know we need a mechanism for convenience, right? We don't. This isn't for you know the guy in Bitmex moving millions of dollars, right? It's just not. That's fine for right now. And but for us, it does enable the everyday user to get from seeing a, you know, hey, this game looks cool, to being, you know, actually clicking play and having a way to play that game without, you know, a three-day delay of going to an exchange or figuring out what is MetaMask or what is Scatter. And um, realistically, that's kind of the focus of it, right? And so your concerns, there's a level of validity. Don't don't get me wrong. But I think ultimately, like, the trade-off is absolutely worth it for for us in terms of getting somebody in the door to crypto and getting those mainstream users mm -hmm. and then ultimately right if you have a lot of assets you're going to want to put them in somewhere private anywhere off you know hopefully offline and uh, i think that's kind of you know how we've seen it is this is the uh, the gateway to that mm -hmm. that's excellent you know when it comes to gaming and things like that i i have to admit i'm kind of lost when it comes to gaming and uh but it's a huge industry and i can understand why you guys are tapping into it so is there any um maybe people who are in the wings who are looking to to come on board that you can talk to us about yeah, so I mean, just to hit on the gaming sector, I mean, I think gaming, you know, people are starting to kind of realize how large it is. I mean, we, we uh, you know, run Ops, our founders, and, and a lot of our team have been a part of OpsGames.com, which is the world's largest peer-to-peer -peer, you know, in-game item marketplace in the world. And, and we had a very, you know, close look at how massive this market really was. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, just the regular gaming industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, you know, and then... It's than, and then yeah, it's, it's larger than, you know, Hollywood and, and all the, the entire Hollywood and music industry combined with, you know, some level of multiplier in there. So it's massive and it's growing at a rate that none of those things could ever keep up with. So the majority of that revenue also comes from in-app purchases, which ultimately are in-game items, right? So I think that there's definitely going to... You're going to see that trend continue um, in terms of, you know, where blockchain fits, I think we're finally getting to the point, and I know we personally have some stuff that you know we're going to be announcing here shortly that are actually taking people who are completely outside the blockchain, so well-known um, you know, uh, partners outside the blockchain space and bringing them into the blockchain space. And I think part of what was required to even get that to a point where it was you know, was something they could even digest was having something like you know, CloudWallet and other things. You know, if I was to tell a huge gaming studio that somebody's got to go set up a crypto wallet, manage a private key, do all these things. They're just like, look, man, no. We spent a ton on user acquisition, and this is basically just throwing our money down the drain. So we had to kind of build a lot of these solutions, and, and a lot of the thought process behind it was working in conjunction with these partners and seeing what the pain points were for them that they needed solved. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then in terms of you know what's coming up, I mean, I really am not at <laughs> I would say stay tuned. I think the rest of this month there's going to be some pretty exciting stuff coming from us. But uh, you know, I can't speak to anything specifically until, yeah, for obvious reasons, and, until it's live. But um, I would so stay tuned. We'll be, there. we'll be staying tuned on uh, Twitter, right? Is that where you do a lot of the announcements, or yeah. are, are there other 
that we can uh, we can follow you guys. I mean, Twitter's a great source. Our, our social team's very up to speed. We've got 24 hour kind of coverage there. Uh, Telegram channel's quite active as well. So, you know, within a matter of seconds, regardless of where it's posted, it'll be everywhere. Um, if you follow, you know, at wax underscore IO on Twitter, um, or you join the wax Telegram channel, uh, it's very simple to, to keep in touch. So yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so we don't have any sneak peeks that you can give us right away then. That's that's I might, I, might have a, I might have a promotion here um, that could be pretty interesting. If I can, I don't know if I can screen share in here, but uh, let me give that a shot. Hold on a second. Let me give you the screen here. Yeah, there I got it. Um, screen share. All right. Oops, I'll right on here. I'm sharing you for a second, but. Let me know when you can see this. All right, there we go. So um, yeah, to kind of commemorate the, the launch of all of these microservices, the onboarding of new dApps. You know, we had prospectors go live last week, broke a bunch of records in terms of DAU um, and volume there. And then you know, we wanted to kind of do a big Christmas giveaway. And what we're giving away is a million dollars worth of prizes. So it's a mixture of different um, tokenized cryptos. So we do a lot of Bitcoin and Ethereum giveaways on the on our Twitter channels. We've got all sorts of gaming items, whether it's CD keys, we even have a motorcycle in here for Supreme, a Supreme Pullman combo motorcycle. There's all sorts of good stuff in here. And, and really what we're trying to do is support the DAP ecosystem. Um, how to participate, we're actually working with a partner called Bounty Blocks. They can watch in um, on-chain transactions. So if somebody's in a DAP, Basically, we can track that and we can say, okay, this person actually did play a dApp and then go back and it would be pretty simple to then open up a gift. And if you meet these criteria, you'll be able to basically open up a loot box and you'll have a chance of winning one of these like awesome, you know, up to a million dollars worth of items. So that is the sneak peek there. Um, the redemption process is very simple. And uh, yeah, here's a little sneak peek at some of those prizes. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. So that is very exciting, and just in time for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the site might change a little bit before now when we launch it, but that's the general concept, and we're going forward with it. So it should be live here in the next, you know, day. Wow, that's really exciting. Um, let me see. I mean, was there anything that I kind of missed that you wanted to touch on and share with our audience? Um, you know, I, I think for for your audience, I mean, you know, one of the the, the cool things, I mean, it's just kind of the, the progress, right? And I think we've been really in this kind of, you know, largely in an R&D phase and getting all the block producers and getting our chain up and running. And now we're starting to really hit our stride here. And it's been really fun to see, you know, new dApps go live and be extremely successful right off the bat. Um, Blocktivity, I think we're number six or seven already today. And, and I think we'll be in the top three by the end of the week. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of utility happening on our chain and I think people are starting to see that. I'm getting a lot of inbound, you know, discussions from DAP developers and different partners and have some really interesting things that we're working on going forward. So I think, you know, it's kind of the best is yet to come here and, and we're really just starting. So I have a kind of a, a goofy question to ask you, I guess. If you were sure. to have one person, uh, one game that you could have adopt WAX, you know, what would it be like Madden 2020 or something like something crazy like that? I mean, what would be the game that you guys would adopt or they would adopt you and you you would say we made it? Well, I mean, look, the obvious answer here is going to be Fortnite, right? I mean, that would be huge. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, for me personally, that's so funny. I say Madden like football, and you and you're like Fortnite. No, 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 no. And, and, I'm not, and this is your this is your area of expertise. But Madden would be small in, in comparison to Fortnite. I mean, for yeah. me, something like League of Legends uh, would be massive. World of Warcraft, maybe. World of Warcraft, we, we yeah. I mean, World of Warcraft, CS:GO, some of the stuff we worked with historically would be huge if they adopted uh, you know blockchain. And then you know, for me, I had just recently bought Call of Duty and. That is just like a blockchain gold mine. I mean, the amount of in-game skins, cosmetics, upgrades, and whatnot. I mean, it was—it's just almost like 
you know, clearly that it's almost like the game is built with the economy in mind before the game is designed. It, it's incredible how often you level up, you get new items. So that would be a really interesting one in terms of just the diversity of, of assets and also you know the worldwide audience. So that one would be great. Um, you know, I've always wanted to do something with Magic the Gathering directly, where we could do something with them. I think it's such a great, you know, use case. I think the CCG market is 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 great for blockchain. Um, so those are a few. I know I kind of dodged the question with you know the exact <laughs> answer, but I mean those are those are kind of the the big guys that would be awesome to get on. Yeah, well, we're getting uh, low on time here, and so I just wanted to kind of close it uh, close it out with a couple more fun questions, um, if you'd sure. be so willing. Yeah, um, no so, well, I mean, so five questions. Oh, wow. If um, if you had a favorite altcoin to uh, to invest in or watch besides Wax, what would it be? That is a good question. And all coin for you being anything outside of you know anything area, outside of Bitcoin. I would anything say anything outside of Bitcoin. Anything wow. outside of Bitcoin. So it could be any token, ERC twenty, you know. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I think you know, wax wax aside, I mean, I, I would probably, you know, looking at some of the DeFi stuff coming up, I'd have to do a little bit more uh, research. I think there's a lot, a lot coming out in this next year with DeFi. I think there's gonna be some incredible use cases. Um, that pop up out of there. There's a few interesting pro uh, projects in that space that I think you know really have a business case. And, and, and really, you know, if if we weren't living in bizarro land with crypto, where you know functionality and utility doesn't seem to translate to price, I think these guys would be doing well. I mean, I've been very impressed with the MakerDAO project, um, MKR token. Uh, you know, it's 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 having its its ups and downs, but the, you know they've really done a good job of pioneering that kind of multi collateral. Uh, you know, debt position uh, concept and being able to really leverage, you know, DeFi in a useful manner. So I, I've been impressed with them. Um, what else jumps off the, the screen at me here? I mean, my head's going negative. I'm like, oh, you should definitely have <laughs> this. But uh, that those are those are probably the ones I would keep my eye on. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep it at that. Okay, uh, and how about Bitcoin? Do you think it's ever going to hit twenty thousand again? I think it'll hit a hundred thousand again. Or not nice. again. Sorry for a first time. Do you have a time frame? Do you have a time frame in there? Because we have a going uh, bet with the crypto trader editorial team. You know, uh, we've got some uh, some people who think it's dead, and we have some people who think it's going to last forever. Yeah, no, it's certainly not dead. Um, I, I really genuinely believe that. Uh, so for me, I mean, I think 2020 will see all time highs for sure. Um, well, for sure, let's let's not use certainties in, in this life. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so anyways, that would be, yeah, it'd be, you know, a, a guess there. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a maximalist, but I certainly believe in Bitcoin and, and, and its longevity here. And I don't yeah, close but definitely it. in our lifetime, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was saying 2020 will hit all time highs. So all right. All right. You and me are on the same well. page with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you if you have a daily mantra or a favorite quote that you kind of go by that kind of gets you through the day. Daily mantra quote that, you know, it would be, it would be untrue of me to say I have something that like really is like my mantra every day, but you know, I think for me, it's all been about, you know, keeping things in perspective, you know, um, it's very easy to get caught up in like, oh, we didn't get this deal or like this thing can go the way it did. And, and it's like, you know, I, at the end of the day, I'm an extraordinary lucky person, I have a wonderful job, you know, my life is, is pretty great. Um, so just trying to keep things in perspective for me, you know, it's just a personality flaw where I just can, can let things overrun my mind of like, oh, this and that. It's like, wait, wait, wait. If you live on the beach in Venice Beach, you like your job, you have good friends, you know, this, this stuff is small potatoes. Well, if you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work at all, does it? It's, hey, you know what, sometimes it feels like work, but I do really love it. And it's something that keeps me on my toes and, and super engaged. You know, this is, this is the right place for me to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the fourth question is, if you had a chance to go to the moon or mm -hmm. out into space, would you? A hundred percent. I would be the first person if I had the money to buy whatever the first flight is going to be, or one of the first flights on, you know, whatever SpaceX or Virgin or whoever these guys are. Huge, huge uh, 
space space junkie. So yes, I would one hundred percent do it. That's so funny. All right, and the last question: What's your favorite beverage uh, after hours? Favorite after hours beverage. So. Uh, I can tell you what my most consistent drink is. I mean, I'm usually a, a vodka martini guy. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got a soft spot for, for beer as well. Um, you know, not into the heavy IPAs anymore. Used to like them. Uh, I don't know what happened over time that faded. But, uh, you know, big fan of Czech beers. Spent, spent a lot of time in Prague and, and you know, Central Eastern Europe. So, yeah. Very nice. I'm, I'm a whiskey girl myself. Yeah, I don't exactly get any tough guy points for the vodka martini, but it happens to be the truth. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that. Um, and sure. that's really it for our time. Uh, I want to really thank you so much for taking the time to uh, spend with me and uh, answer some of these questions. And I hope that uh, when we have some more of these developments and big announcements that we can invite you back. Excellent. Happy to be here. You know, anytime. We're just you know, we've got our we've got each other's contact information. I'll certainly keep you in the loop. Thank you very much. I, I hope you have a wonderful day. You as well. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.